Shalom, shalom, everybody. Once again, it is your brew, Bon Shemayim, back with another one. So today, as you can see from the book of Jubilees, we're going to go into what a Jubilee is, and we're going to use Jubilees to count the Bible's timeline from Adam down to Christ. We're going to use the Bible, Jubilees, and we're going to also use some historic things that we found, right? Some books and other things. Without any further ado, let's get it. We're going to start off with learning what a Jubilee is. And we're going to start with Leviticus 25, 8 through 11. Let's get it. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, in the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. So it's saying that every seven years is a Sabbath year, right? In seven times seven years of Sabbath is 49 years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month in the day of atonement. Shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land? And ye shall hollow the, fifth, the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be a Jubilee unto you. Ye shall return every man unto his possession. Ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall, shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. Right? So it's saying that you, you were permitted not to, you weren't permitted to gather things that grow of themselves during this jubilee year. Right? So we're going to break down a little more. Let's get it. Now, this is from Google. It says the, chrono the chronology given in Jubilees is based on multiples of seven. The Jubilee year is the year that follows the passage of seven weeks of years, seven cycles of sabbatical years or 49 total years into which all of the time has been divided, right? So it's pretty much saying that exactly what we read in Leviticus, that every seven years is a Sabbath of years. And at the end of these Sabbath of years, you time seven, you get 49. And once you go into the 50th year, that's the Jubilee year, right? So now that we know a Jubilee is 50 years, let's go a little bit more into the timeline and the history, right? Let's get it. Now, this is the book of Jubilees, chapter three, and we're only going to read verse five, right? And it says, on the first week of the first Jubilee, Adam and his wife were in the Garden of Eden for seven years, tilling and keeping it. And we gave him work and we instructed him to do everything that is suitable for tillage, right? So it's showing right again, like just using biblical scriptures to show and prove that seven, the same thing Leviticus says that seven years make up a, a year sabbath right and then seven years is a fraction of what a jubilee is right which is uh multiple weeks right multiple sabbath weeks in years right so without any further ado i'm gonna go on to the next one let's get it all right the next chapter we're going into is chapter six of the book of jubilees and we're gonna start at six right the second six it says, he set his bow in the cloud for a sign of the eternal covenant that there should not again be a flood on the earth to destroy all the days of the earth. So this is talking about the rainbow, which homosexuals have taken. But that was a sign between God and, and his people that he wouldn't destroy the earth that way. Right. It says, for this reason, it is ordained and written on the heavenly tablets that they should celebrate the Feast of Weeks in this month, once a year to renew the covenant every year. And this whole festival was celebrated in heaven from the day of creation till the days of Noah, 26 Jubilees in five weeks of years, right? So it's saying that it, it was 26 Jubilees from the time of Adam to the time of Noah. Right. Which is, I think just rough drafting it in my in my head. That is 26 times 50. I believe that's 1300. Right. It says to the days of Noah's death and from the day that Noah, it says 
Noah and his sons observed it for seven jubilees and one week of years to the day of Noah's death. And from the day of Noah's death, his sons did away with it unto the days of Abraham and they ate blood. But Abraham observed it and Isaac and Jacob and his children observed it up into thy days. And in thy days, the children of Israel forgot it until ye celebrated it anew on this mountain. So I just want to throw this in because this is proof that the holy heavenly days that we we're supposed to keep are being kept and celebrated in the heavens. So when we keep the holy days, we actually are in line with the heavens and with God. Right. And it says, and do thou command the children of Israel to observe this festival in all of their generations for a commandment unto them one day in a year in this month, they shall celebrate the festival for it is the feast of weeks in the feast of first fruits. This feast is twofold and is of a double nature according to what is written and engraved and engraven concerning it, right? Showing that these are things that were also put down on the tablet, right? But the biggest thing we wanted to get out of this was that 1300 years. So now we're getting a timeline, 1300 years from Adam to Noah. Now, this is a book you could pick up at Amazon called The First 2000 Years by uh, Cleon Skushin, right? I just wanted to go into it because without going into any further details to show that it goes from the first 2000 years from Adam to Abraham, showing that from Adam to Abraham was 2000 years. Now, remember this because we're keeping count of the years to count up to crisis time and everything like that. So let's get into the next part. OK, without me having to go from chapter to chapter in the Bible to count the years of each person, this is a, a Google search showing that from Abraham, right? All the way up until Moses was 430 years, right? And I wanted to go over this because from Adam to Moses was the first 2,500 years of society. And it's important for when we go into Daniel and get the rest of these prophecies out. So the first 2,500 years of, of civilization of man was from Adam all the way up into Moses. Let's get it. We're going to go on to this next part. Okay, now we're going into Daniel 9 and 24, right? It says, 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision in prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Right. So the 70 weeks that is speaking of is 70 jubilees. Right. Which is thirty five hundred years. We just counted the first twenty five hundred years was from Adam all the way up into Moses. And remember, Moses was the one who got the law, which was supposed to take away transgression from the people. That was the start of it. Right. And that would last all the way up into the end of these 70 weeks which would be Christ coming back and taking sin away from people and removing sin out of the world, which is 70 Jubilees, which is 3,500 years. And if you know, 2,500 plus 3,500 is 6,000. And we know that at, at the end of six, right, is seven. That's Christ's year. He has the whole seventh time the whole seventh day, the whole seventh year that belongs to Christ, our savior into his people. Let's get it. Now, this is from the forgotten books of Eden, chapter three. And we're going to start at, uh, I believe this is verse one, right? It says, God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years and thou in thy seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and years are fulfilled when I shall send the word which we know the word is Christ, the word that created thee and against which thou hast transgressed, the word that made thee come out of the garden and that raised thee when thou was fallen. Because like I said, as many times in this book that Adam died and in the word, Christ kept waking him back up, lifting him back to life. Yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. Right. 
But when Adam heard these words from God of the great five days and a half, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking that there would be but five days and a half for him to the end of the world. So he was thinking like five and a half days, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you get me five and a half days. He wasn't thinking like the Bible says that a day to God is a thousand years to men, right? Which is what he was speaking of. And we're going to break that down in this next segment because we're going to continue. And Adam wept and prayed God to explain it to him. Then God in his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image in similitude, explained it to him that these were 5,500 years and how one would then come and save him in his seed. Right. Speaking of Christ coming in the end times to save us. But God had before that made this covenant with our father, Adam. In the same terms, ear. He came out of the garden when he was by the tree whereof Eve took the fruit and gave it to him. And as much as our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree and saw how God had then changed the appearance of it into another form and how it withered. And Adam went into it, went to it. He feared, trembled and fell down. But God in his mercy lifted him up and made this covenant with him, right? So Adam constantly felt bad about what he was doing. He constantly fell down or died or something happened. And God sent Christ or Yeshua to raise him back up. Now, the fact that it says it would be 5,500 years until him and his seeds was saved. Adam, the interesting part about this, Adam was 500 years old. If you read more in depthly into the book, uh, the lost books of Eden when this happened, right? Adam was 500 years old when this happened. So that's 6,000 years. Like we were just speaking of with the prophecy with Daniel, right? The first 2,500 years from Adam all the way up into Moses. And then from Moses unto Christ is coming again, 2,500 plus the 70 weeks in Daniel's 924, which it would be 3,500, which makes 6,000. It's the same 6,000 that is speaking of in the in the forgotten books of Eden when he's talking to Adam. Let's get it. Now we about to go into Matthew to round this up to show that that last day, the Sabbath day, that last seven, that last thousand years belongs to Yeshua, right? This is Matthew 12 and 8. It says, for the son of man is the Lord even of the Sabbath day, right? So we know that this is what Yeshua has said to the people who was doubting him. And we'll get into the next one, which is Matthew 24 and 22. And it says, except those days have been shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So we know that there is a timeline of 6,000 years from Adam's time until Christ comes back to save his people. But we also know that the Bible says Christ told us himself that that time is going to be shortened. His time is going to start early because if it didn't, not none of us would have survived, right? So we don't know when in the 6,000 years, right? Because it's going to be before the 6,000 years and we're very close to the 6,000 years. So let's get this next scripture. This is Revelations 20 and 4, right? And it says, and I saw thrones and they sat upon and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yeshua and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received the mark upon their foreheads for in their hands. And they lived or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So this was the same promise that was promised to Abraham. I mean, promised to Adam, right? And that was also promised to Moses. 
the same promise that Christ would come and save their people, the same promise that was promised to Abraham. This all leads to that same promise after 6,000 years, right? So we know the first 2,500 years, like I said, is from Adam to Moses, like we proved here, right? In the first 30, in the next 3,500 years, it's from Moses until the coming back of Christ, until Christ comes to redeem his people. And that's important to know the time so that we could be prepared. Because like it says, and the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were done, were finished, right? So it's important that if God created us to live in this time, that we are looking forward to being in that kingdom and making it, to making it to see Christ, to being to see our Savior, the one whom we believe on, right? Now, some people will be like, why would you even go into this? First, I thought this is very interesting, the times and everything like that. And it's important to know the time so we can know what time we currently live in. Second, that God, all the people God has talked to, he showed the times from the beginning to the end. Moses learned from Abraham all the way to him. Moses didn't know Abraham. God told him about Abraham. God told him about the covenants and everything that he made with him. We're going to go more into that when we get into uh, the book of Jubilees more. And God showed Abraham, uh, Moses, all of that. And that's the reason why God tells us from the beginning to the end. So we would be aware. Now, we do live in the end times. Y'all ever wondered why in the year 2000, they thought the world was going to end because they thought that that was the 6000 years. Like the Bible says in another scripture, after two days, I will raise you up and I will live with you. Right. Now, I'm probably quoting it wrong. But they thought that that was the end of the 2000 years and Christ was coming. Think about it. Now that what we know about technology, what would make it logical to think that all technology would end? The sun wouldn't shine no more. If y'all remember what 1999 was going into 2000, they're making it like no technology would work. We would all be in the dark, which is a Bible prophecy, first off. So it's important to know these books. These books, we're going to go into more of these books often. You notice how I went into Jubilees. I went to the Forgotten Books of Eden, and I went to the Bible, and they all align. Instead of people reading the books to try to find contradictions or things that don't align, because people also do that with just the Bible, we should read these books to try to find out the things that do align and try to match it up so we can get the full story. Sometimes I hear things like, man, those books aren't uh, aren't uh, canological. They're not they're not the real books. Listen, this is the same type of syndrome that we got. Right. Check me out. I've heard people say, how could you believe in the Bible? Isn't that the same book that your slave masters gave you? Now, let's do a history check on this. Right. The book that we was given from our slave masters, as they say, the Bible at that time that they allowed slaves to read, it did not have the Old Testament in it. It barely had any books out of the New Testament in it and any quotes that they didn't feel like were correct in it. They took out of it. So the biggest key is that it was missing things. Right. So then we were given a book by our slave masters, the Holy Bible. And they tell us what don't read the Apocrypha. Don't go into the extra books because those aren't real books. These are people telling us this, right? Meanwhile, the Ethiopian Bible, the the Egyptian Bible, I mean, the Ethiopian Bible, the um, Egyptian Bible, a lot of these Bibles are over 2,000 years old. They were around during the time that Christ walked around. The Bible is only 2,700 years old, the actual Bible. And it probably wasn't called a Bible back then. It was just a book of scrolls. It's 2,700 years. So a lot of these Bibles that they have in these other countries, they originated with the book, the lost, the forgotten books of Eden, right? The book of Enoch in the Old Testament. At that time that they were made, they didn't even have the New Testament. These are newer extra books that would have been made after that time that included the New Testament. These these books or Bibles that these other countries had had these other books in them before there was a Christ or before there was a New Testament. Christ would have been reading these books during that time. So when we only want to stick to the books that they actually gave us and then these same people out of the same breath, the people who would tell us that 
we slaves for believing in the book in the holy bible when they start believing in it they'll also be like well listen those other books they're not real books this is all information that we're being fed if you really want to know how real something is go into it read it break it down it helps you get a timeline better like i showed we went from the 5500 years that god told adam it would take uh for uh him and his seed to be redeemed the first 2500 years of man in the last 3500 years of man is prophesied through the prophet daniel the last 70 weeks in, in each case it, it, it adds up to 6000 and then we also went into revelation which proves that that last thousand years is crisis it belongs to our savior right so never let a person tell you don't go into these extra books because let me tell you, if you don't know the extra books, you're probably looking at the piece half. Salakia, the piece half put together, the puzzle half put together. On that note, I just want to say Shalawam, uh, Kaula Haya by Shimia Shaya, uh, Baraka Tha. And uh, until the next time, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. We are going to go more in depth into a lot of these books. And on that note, peace out until the next time. Bless y'all.